So this is a Simpsons Model 15, made in 1952. How do I know it's a Simpsons? It says so on the tag. That's also how I know it's a Model 15. It's a little wet there, but the axle is really wet. And then down here there's the drain plug and it's wet above that. So there's the seal that's worn out. Oh, but there's a serious groove in there. So we've got it all welded up and turned down, ready to go back in. So uh, let's get on with it. Just that simple. So I did manage to find a set of replacement seals. The uh, prairie bearing and bolt was able to get me an in-lieu replacement item. I tried Napa, I tried CarQuest, I tried Motion Industries, I even tried small engine shops. Nobody could get them, nobody could find a replacement item. Prairie bearing and bolt to the rescue yet again. So when the seals come in, uh, We'll uh, put those in, but in the meantime... So my new seals have arrived. They're a 9843 nitrol seal. They're not exactly the same as what I took out, being a felt seal. They're uh, only a quarter of an inch thick instead of uh, three-eighths of an inch thick. So because they're not a felt seal and they're not as wide, I want to see whether or not those pinholes are going to cause me any grief. To do that, I'm going to slide the cover on without the seal in it. And it hydrolocks on the bushing there, so you've got to give it a spin. And then I'm going to take a marker. Put a mark on the axle where that shaft is going to ride, or the outside of the housing will ride, and then I can figure out where that seal will ride because I know how thick that flange is. And that puts me Oh, quite nicely outside those pinholes. Yeah, that's not going to be a problem at all. So we're happy that the seal is going to ride in a good spot, not leak. At least not as bad as the old one did, so that's a bonus. All I have to do now is put the seal in the cover and uh, We'll be ready to put it all back together. There we go, all the way in and home. Yep, all the way in and home. Let's put it on. Now that we have our oil seal installed, I'm going to put it back on. I have run a bead of RTV silicone sealant around the outside. It didn't have a gasket, but uh, just to improve my odds of success, I've put a really thin layer around it. I also uh, took a minute and uh, ran the cover past the uh, parts washer. Let's slide that on there. And 
get it home where it needs to be. There we go. Get a couple of screws in it. I'm going to let the RTV set up for a while. All right. We'll uh, tighten those up a little bit and come back in an hour for the final tightening. While I'm waiting on the silicone to uh, cure, I'm going to uh, clean up the clicker hubs because I noticed that uh, the springs are broken. So I'm going to have to get some paper clips, run them through some gas to melt the grease off of them, and uh, I'll do that while uh, I'm waiting on the uh, RTV to cure. All right, that's those cleaned up. Okay, so this is the clicker hub that allows you to go backwards because it has no reverse gear, so it will drive forward, but you have to pull it back. And when you pull it back, these will slide in and allow you to come backwards. When it goes forward, they slide out and engage in the clicker mechanism. You can see there's a spring in there, hopefully. The other spring is just broken. So I'm just going to make one out of a paper clip. They're not that hard to make out of a paper clip. All you need to do is straighten out the paper clip. Figure out how long you want it. And then just bend them up. And trim them off. And that'll work as a clicker hub spring. I'm going to pull this one out and uh, put it in. And then I'll have to go and find a new cotter pin because that one just broke. Okay, I found a new cotter pin and they just go in. Let's just clean that up. It just goes in like that. The spring goes behind that. And then the pawl just goes over top of that. And it just bounces like that. And you can see that just bounces away like it's supposed to. I'm going to trim those off and then I'll do the other one off camera. So if you don't have paper clips, you can use bobby pins. 
it's the same thing just figure out how long you want it to be and then bend it up and spread them apart and you have a clicker spring again that goes in that goes in the clicker hub goes on and it just spring them of things I'm going to button the other ones up, make another spring and everything will be good. Alright, so I've got the clicker springs back in. You can see how this has a serrated edge on it. When the clicker hub goes in, it meshes with that serration. It'll click going one way, but not allow you to turn going the other way. So it will drive forward and let you pull the tire back. And that's because those dogs lock into that or collapse. That simple. The axle rides in this housing here that the uh, hitch is attached to and it's got a grease chamber in it. So I'm going to throw some grease in there to keep it from running dry and rubbing. If you put too much grease in, it just pumps out into the grease the uh, gear housing. It mixes with the oil and then your oil gets too thick. So you can't do that. You got to just be careful and put the right amount until it squeezes out over here and life will be good. There's also a grease fitting up here for that small gear that was up there and the shaft that it rides on. So I'm going to throw some grease in it. And the bushing for the intermediate gear, it needs a little bit of gear, grease. But again, too much grease. Oh, I popped the, the, uh, the grease fitting out. That's not good. I'll have to put that back in. So I've pulled off the fill cap and I'm going to try to put this fellow back in where it belongs. Yep, that's in there. I'm going to put the uh, collar on. This first collar sets the end play for that shaft. You want some end play but not much. If you have it to that far that way, the gear will rub on the uh, cover. If you come this way too much, it'll ride on that intermediate gear. So you want somewhere in between. Somewhere there. And then you just do up the uh, grub screw. There we go. Not a lot of movement, but a bit of movement. It's been about an hour, so I'm going to do the final snugging on that. We cleaned up those clicker hubs during the break. I'm just going to use a torque wrench because I want them to be even, not necessarily perfect. Alright, we've got them all torqued down. I have to put some gear oil in it because I want to see if that uh, is going to leak. But uh, the silicone needs to cure overnight, so we'll see you in the morning. Alright, so it's been a day and a half because the RTV said 24 hour cure time unless it's cold. And it's cold, so I gave it a day and a half. I've got some 85-140 uh, gear oil 
I'm going to fill it up until it comes out that uh, hole there. That's the oil level hole. Yeah, that's uh, thick. Just starting to come out there now. Well, I'm going to put the drain plug in. Or the level plug, actually. And that buttons that up. Put the top back on. The top has a hole in it as a vent and it just goes on and gets tightened up. Not crazy. There we go. All right. For those of you who are wondering, that took uh, half a liter of gear oil, which is I think a pint in units that show subservience to the British King. So while I was waiting for that, I had a look at the carburetor. It had a float bowl gasket that needed replacing. And when I replaced that, the fuel shutoff wouldn't work, so I replaced the fuel shutoff. But I didn't have one that works with copper lines, so it got a new fuel line as well. But uh, I also put the tire on just for something to do. I'm going to get this tire up. <coughs> I'm going to get this tire on and uh, then we can see if it fires. Yeah, or at least get it off the bench and see if it fires. So the first step in getting the wheel back on is to put the collar on. It just slides on there. We'll lock it in place in a minute. Next we need the wheel and I've put a bunch of grease in the clicker hub portion. But it just slides on. It's not keyed or anything. Just slides on there. Spins freely. The important part is the clicker hub and I made some springs for it. Uh, there's a segment on that. But it's got the new springs in it. It does have a key in it. And the key is L-shaped. Uh, there we go. And it rides in that hole and that keyway. Not sure if you can see that, but... Anyway, there is a left and a right hub. You'll see that in the photo. And then that just slides in. I'll move you around so you get a better view. So that's the hub. And it just slides in. Oh, there's that key. It needs to sit in that square, in that hole. Just pull the dogs in so that it goes past. There we go. So then next, you just pull it out to wherever you want it to be. And I usually set it about an inch back. Doesn't have to be an inch exactly. Just is what it is. And there's a square bolt that locks it in place. 
that sits on that flat spot and it just gets tightened down wherever you want it to be and then to keep it in place because it will slide you uh, do up the one in the back so just pull the tire forward move the collar forward and then in an awkward fashion tighten up this bolt and then make sure that your tire rot your tire rotates in the proper direction it should click when you're doing that and drive when you're doing that because when you're turning the pulley your wheels will turn forward when you're being driven by the engine. So your tires need to click when you're doing that and lock when you're doing that so that the engine will drive them forward. Not much to that. Let's get it down off the table. Good, so we're back on the floor. Nobody died getting it off the uh, table, so that's good. We've uh, got it all back together. I welded up that axle. We replaced the uh, axle seal, sealed up the gear case, put fresh oil in it. Like I say, it takes a half a liter of that 85W140. Half a liter, I think, is a uh, pint in units that show allegiance to the British crown. Yeah, some countries are still subservient to the British crown and use pints and quarts and weird stuff like that. So, you know, whatever. I also went through the engine, changed the head gasket, cleaned up the head. Yeah, I... Uh, changed the float bowl gasket because it was leaking. It was as hard as a rock. I changed the shut-off valve and the hose because the shut-off valve wouldn't. We've uh, changed the spark plug, put a cap on that wire. Yeah, I guess that just leaves uh, seeing if it'll run on gas. What do you think? Will it run on gas? Let's see. It runs fine on gas, so I guess that just leaves putting the belt on and uh, taking it outside, see if it'll go around and it's under its own power. So let's get the belt on it. The belt I'm using is a 4L440. A 430 and a 450 will fit but uh, a 440 seems to be the best fit for this. It goes over that pulley, around that pulley, and over the idler. I did grease the idler. It has belt guides on it to keep the belt in the right place. And when you pull the clutch, all that happens is that pulley comes up and tensions the belt.
Pretty simple mechanism. So uh, let's take it outside and uh, see what happens. So there we go. It runs under its own power. It's back to fully functional, more or less. It's a good starting point for a person who wants to do an in-depth restoration, but it's functional as is. I'm going to put some implements with it and uh, I think I'm going to sell it because I need room in the barn and I've got others. Yeah. So uh, if you liked the video, leave me a comment, let me know because, you know, YouTube algorithm likes it when you leave comments and interact with the video. But, we'll see what I'm doing next time. Thanks for watching. Come back next time. By the grace of God, we'll all be here. Bye.